so far away. Get in there. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, you're, you're so very quiet, so I think you're half asleep. Hello, Dee. Um, um, so, it's no secret that in the tech industry and in other industries across, the, across all the professions, diversity is an issue. We can all agree with that, right? Yes, no, you're half asleep, that's fine. Um, <laughs> and as an organizer of tech events, diversity is important to me. It's something that I am, as Carol said, very, um, very passionate about. And on my travels, I mean, I've been to a lot of work camps, um, especially in Europe. Um, I've seen many events tackle diversity in different ways. When I took on the role as Work Camp London organizer, I had an opportunity to lead the event. Um, and diversity was something I was passionate about, but I didn't want to tackle diversity. The thing about diversity is, it puts the emphasis on the minority to come up and make themselves known. And I don't really like that. Um, being someone who is part of that minority, it always makes, it's always like as if I have to do the work for the rest of the majority, and I just don't like doing lots of work. So instead, I kind of thought about inclusivity. I wanted to focus Work Camp London on making it the most inclusive event possible. But first thing is first. How do you make a community inclusive? The answer, at least I thought it did, was accessibility. Putting accessibility at the core of the event. What if we made it as easy as it could be to, for more people to come to the event? So that every excuse someone came to me with on why they wouldn't come to a work camp, it was already dealt with. What happens if that is the goal? If instead of looking at diversity, we looked at inclusivity, and in, to do that, we made it easy for people. It would mean that the minorities become the majority. So what happened at Work Camp London two years ago? The tweets that we got afterwards included some of these. Thank you, Work Camp London, the most inclusive, accessible, and supportive community I have had the privilege to be a part of. Honestly, reading these tweets makes my heart just, I'm so proud of the team. Back in Sussex, after a phenomenal weekend at Work Camp London, thank you to everyone for making our first Work Camp London amazing and accessible. And what the amazing thing about this particular tweet is the lady in the tweet was a first time speaker at our event too. I was skeptical of live captioning, but super useful, amazing to watch, but weird experience as a speaker. Fair play, fair play. Enjoying the quiet room at Work Camp London to do some light reading. Would love to see this at more conferences. Not enough characters to describe what an amazing conference Work Out London was. Loved friendliness, captioning, and quiet zones, especially. I think those tweets really show how putting accessibility at the core of the event was the right call. So how did we do it? How did the team of Work Out London 2016 and 2017 do this? First and foremost, I made sure that we had 100% organizer buy-in. Everyone on the organizing team agreed this was the goal for Work Camp London. It meant that we were all aiming for a common goal, a common focus, and it meant that we had a cohesion in the way we thought about what we were doing for the event. And the way we did that was to think, does whatever it is we're discussing make the event more accessible, less accessible, or the same? Every single thing we did, this question came up. Sometimes it was obvious what the answer was, and sometimes it wasn't so obvious. Now, if the answer is number one, more accessible, great. It is a clear win for everyone. It's a no-brainer, let's do it. 
If the answer is two, less accessible, okay. At least you know there is going to be some issues. At least you're aware and conscious of the fact whatever it is that you're discussing has potential problems. We had a situation like that at WordCamp London. The venue we were using had a particular spot where we wanted to put the teas and coffees um, stands during the event. The problem was there was only staircase access and to the coffee and the tea. And now, as all of you, I'm sure, realize, coffee and tea is kind of the bloodline of events. So not being able to access that is kind of a problem. There were two solutions to it. At least we figured there were two solutions to it. There might have been more. If you know of more solutions, let me know later. Um, the first one was to put some volunteers at the front of the staircase who could run up and down and get coffees for people. That was a easy solution for us. We could get more volunteers, just make sure they were on the rotor at all times. And the other option was to just tell everybody that there are going to be particular locations that they could not access. So they, ahead of time, knew that they had to go to another coffee station instead. By telling people ahead of time, they can make their own decisions. Our attendees aren't stupid. They are smart people. So if we tell them, we have a situation, we're really sorry, but this is the problem. If you have any ideas on how to help us fix this, we would love to hear from you. They will respond in a very positive manner. And if the answer is number three, that's cool. It's neither better nor worse, it's just different. And that's absolutely cool. So some of the solutions that WordCamp London did included childcare. One of the attendees from 2015 tweeted at us asking if we were going to have any plans for a crash, the, the British word for childcare. Um, some things I learned when I said yes to this was um, don't do it yourself. I don't want to be responsible for other people's children. Bad idea. Find professionals. Make sure you vet them. Not just that they're professionals, but they have the right credentials as well for your particular country. Have a parent that you know, talk to them, who is potentially going to use this service. Parents have this like radar, because they have to pick schools and nurseries and stuff, so they can kind of read these things better than I can. So trust them, and get testimonials, and check through. Live captioning. It helps with catching missing words and accents. I usually speak a lot faster than this, um, so live captioning is usually a very good idea for me. But do consider, in particular locations, you might need extra AV considerations. There is a TV up there that we had to put into place, some chairs and tables, stuff that you wouldn't usually have at the front of a room. Space planning, things like multi-faith rooms, lactation rooms, quiet rooms, breakout spaces, overflow rooms, places where the TV shows a live feed, those can be useful if you have the space. Theme signage. If you have theme signage, it helps your attendees and everyone be self-supportive. They can work out where to go themselves. Um, one pointer, you will need more signage than you think. And the other pointer, please, 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 if there's anything else you learn from this, put signage above head height. Because at five foot two, it's, I'm a very short person and looking over six foot people doesn't work. Scheduling considerations, things like the, the room change and the turnover times, telling people how long they've got to go from A to B is very useful. It allows people to plan their time accordingly, whether the bathroom line is too long or too short, have they got enough time for a good, quick coffee? Things like that allow it to be easier for people to decide how they are going to spend their time at your event. It also allows people to digest information that they're thinking about. Live essential boxes, which are basically these boxes that we put in every single bathroom. Um, they have tampons and towels in different sizes, and we put them in all the bathrooms, men's, women's, and the, dis the disabled bathrooms. Just make sure you check the amount in them and refill them during your event. There were plenty of other things that we did as well, but I want to leave you with some takeaways. Accessibility does not have to be expensive. Some of the things I mentioned there were completely free. You need to think about your audience, the community that you know about, the people that you see every day at your meetups, but also the community that you haven't met yet as well. Make every decision a conscious one, 
whether it's a better or for worse, at least you know what the situation is and fully understand it. Be transparent in your communication. Tell people. Don't be shy about it. You're, we're all volunteers at work camps, and therefore, like, people don't get mad at you when you don't do something as long as you tell them. And with that, I just want to remind you, we didn't look at diversity as a team. We looked at inclusivity. And with the way we did that was to make it an, the event as accessible as possible. I want you to think about what you could do to make your event more diverse, more inclusive, and more accessible. Millie Messi, thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny.